Well, hello. Welcome to another Blu-ray and this time DVD update for February and January of 2016. Uh, it's my first Blu-ray update of 2016. I did do a mail day video back in January that, that includes some of these titles. So those ones I'm going to kind of kind of skim through because I've always I've already showed you them kind of and talked about them a fair bit in that last mail day video. But they are going to be included in this update. Now I still need to get onto the bandwagon of people like say Dan Orton uh, and James Merchant who do their updates and actually have something to say about the films that they're talking about because I have a lot of stuff that I need to see here. Uh, so there won't be a lot of talk about the actual films themselves because I don't know a lot about a lot of them. So. Yeah, uh, also the thumbnail, uh, CP, if you're watching, that one was just for you, man. Um, I don't know about you, uh, I mean, I know that Blu-rays aren't by any stretch of the imagination actually tits, but when it comes to the comparison between tits and Blu-rays, I mean, they're both great. Some are great for different reasons, but I would wager that Blu-rays last uh, a little bit longer than tits. You get, a, you get a bit more enjoyment out of them, if you know what I mean. So, um, so yeah, that, that, that's my two cents on that. Anyway, we're going to get into the DVDs now first. I have, I guess, two DVDs. Uh, the first one is an Arrow video release, Deadly Outlaw Wrecker by Takeshi Mike, uh, which I, again, have no idea. I've never heard of this film before. Um, you'll probably see a theme coming up very soon, uh, and this kind of ties in with that theme. Uh, there's quite a few uh, special features on here, and this was uh, released back in 2010. So, again, it's one of the old kind of uh, the white boxed uh, Arrow releases, um, which is really cool. I don't own one of these, so yeah, I'm interested to check this one out. I'm a big fan of Japanese cinema from all different genres, so I'll definitely um, be interested in seeing what the f this film is like. And it's worth noting as well, this Blu-ray up update is huge. I mean, most of it is Christmas money stuff, a few other things I've picked up and other things I've acquired. Um, and yeah, uh, there's a lot of things. There is, we got Massive Cinema, we got Arrow Video, we got Criterion, uh, we got Steelbooks, we got Comedy, we got Asian Cinema, Silent Cinema, Box Sets. Uh, there's a little bit of everything. Uh, I've teased this, teased this one before, I was going to do a video showing you it in depth, but it just never happened. I don't know if I'll still get around to doing that. I think I should because it's a great box set and I haven't got time to do it now. But it is my first Eureka Masters of Cinema DVD set. Uh, or DVD in general. And I don't think I'll pick up another one. This was just one that I had to pick up. It, it apparently went out of print on Amazon. It might be back now. I don't know. So it depends on really what the uh, what the deal is with that. It might not be going out of print. But I thought it might do one day. So I'm going to jump on it and get it while I can. Didn't really pay a great price for it, but I was happy to pay full price for it because um, it's an incredible set. It is the Buster Keaton short films collection from Eureka. This is one of their first big releases. In fact, it might be their first huge like box set release from, uh, I think, about 10 years ago. 2006, I think it came out, so eight years. Wait, no, no, whoa. eight years? What am I talking about? Yeah, no, 2006. It would have been almost about 10 years ago. Jesus Christ. Time is flying by, but yeah, this is a great set. We've got three Amore cases inside and a huge thick book. It's not even a booklet, it's a 180 page book. I've read a lot of it already and there's some great stuff in there from Buster Keaton himself and a huge roundtable discussion with a lot of people uh, who loved his films or uh, knowledgeable of his films. So it's a very interesting read. I still need to finish it, obviously. And you get three uh, DVD discs. Actually, no, you don't get three DVDs, you get three cases inside. Let me get them out and, uh, and show you show you them. Because, again, I'll, I'll do a proper video on these at some point. This is the, the booklet. I almost think this would have been a better cover for the, the, the box set. I love this shot of, uh, of Buster there with all the film wrapped around him. Uh, and then we have the three discs. Uh, oh, the three cases again, sorry. So uh, th there's the first one. The second one. And the third one. Now... This is a poster for one of Buster Keaton's films, The Haunted House, which is a very good one. But this is a poster for a uh, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle film called The Cook. And this one uh, is also a still image from a Fatty Arbuckle film. So the reason for this is that we have a uh, disc one, disc two. Uh, okay, there are how many discs are there? Four. Okay, there's four. Okay, so there's four discs. So you get disc one, disc two, disc three, and four. Uh, right. The reason there's a lot of Fatty Arbuckle on the, the DVD covers is because a lot of these films are actually Fatty Arbuckle films. Now what this means is that we get to see literally the first film that Buster Keaton ever appeared in back in, was it 1917? Uh, hang on, let me get the booklet back in without without uh, damaging it because I hate that, I hate that if that happens. 
I can't even get it in. That's really strange. This always happens in my updates. I'm, I try and show something and I try and be like, you know, really quick about it and then I end up just uh, trying to fill time. There we go. It's nice and nice and flush. Okay, there we go. So yes, uh, this has films from, did it say something? Yeah, 1917 to 1923. So um, I already have the, I can't grab it. I can grab it now actually. It's just in reach. I have the Kino Video um, Blu-ray set, Buster Keaton, the short films collection from 1920 to 1923, shown this off before, and this has all of Buster Keaton's short films uh, from 1920 to 1923, and after that he started making feature films. Fantastic Blu-ray set, three Blu-ray discs, um, and so I never was really that interested in getting the Eureka DVD because I already own all those films. And it is only till, until recently that I, I figured out that this has more than just that box set. It has, uh, let me just count now, because it's all on the spine, there's a handy list on the spine, actually on the front cover as well. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 films that Fatty Arbuckle made that Buster Keaton starred in between 1917 and 1920. And so all of these are presented as well. And also, in some cases, the transfers on the DVD of this edition, in terms of Buster Keaton's own short films from 1920 onwards, actually have more of the frame in there. And they cropped it on the Kino release. Now, obviously, this is a DVD. It's not going to look anywhere near as good as a Blu-ray. But there's at least different transfers. There's different extras. There's audio commentaries. Uh, and a rare half-hour recording of a 1962 party with Buster, uh, which I believe is in a, a Kino Blu-ray uh, special feature as well. But either way, a stack box that I can't wait to, to delve into the Fatty Arbuckle shorts and see Buster's, like, uh, you know, his birth uh, in front of a, a movie camera. I'll just sort out where I can put the, the stack down here. This one I can, I can breeze through. We've got one Criterion, uh, Limelight Star and Charlie Chaplin. I still think this might be one of the best films I've ever seen. I'm going to rewatch it this month and you will hear about it. So yeah, I've shown this in the last video, so it is what it is. Fantastic release and uh, can't wait to check out the film again in glorious high definition. Now this one is another American release from Kino Video and this one I'm so glad I got it because uh, it's always been around like $30, $35, even $40 and I thought I was never going to be able to afford this. Um, no, not afford it. Uh, be able to buy it because if, I, if something is too expensive on Amazon.com I can't order it here because they then charge me an extra like, you know, about $30 if you, if you order anything that's kind of over about $40 45 50 dollars something like that they'll add another um charge onto it and i don't mean they'll charge me in dollars they'll charge me in norwegian krona but you know it all adds up and it just um it's tough but this went down to about 18 19 bucks and i was like holy shit i gotta jump on that it is uh i don't know how to pronounce the director's name but it is uh we'll just call it the vampires uh it's a nice keynote video release it's a nice slip box uh you get the the blu-ray inside there and it is just a, a fantastic release. I've seen the screens, it looks very good. Um, I don't think there's any special features on there, but it doesn't really need to be, because what you get on this is a six and a half hour film from 1915, 1915 and 1916. 1915 and 1916, because this is one of the first, uh, well, I'm sure it's not one of the first, but it's one of the early serials. And so there are, I think, 15 episodes, no, 10 episodes. 10 episodes, uh, 417 minutes, uh, over six and a half hours, there's two blurry discs to fit them all on there. And it is, again, it's the early form of a TV show. They would show an episode uh, every week at the cinema or, or however the, you know, the however they spaced it out. But a lot of serials were shown weekly. But, you know, either way, they showed these serials in the cinema. And a lot of people basically combined all the, the episodes of this into one big film. If you look on Wikipedia, this is classed as one of the longest films uh, ever made. Um, and it's in the book A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die, which is just behind me there. So I definitely need, need to see this. I've already watched about three or four episodes of it, like I think a few years ago, uh, when I was going through that book, and I really enjoyed it, but just I didn't really uh, give it the time. Now I have it on Blu-ray, I'm going to be ready to, to fully commit the time to it, and I probably would want to polish this off in one sitting, because that's just the kind of guy I am. Right, got some steel books now. Shown this one in the last video, so I won't dwell on it, but it is Martin Scorsese Hugo. Great glossy steelbook. I was waiting for a nice release of this film. I sold my, my bog standard release because I just wanted something more for this film because I absolutely love it. And it's a, it's a very nice steelbook. Nothing spectacular. There's a couple of things about it I don't like, but you know, it's great to own the film in a steelbook, in steelbook format. And I also have a trip to the moon on Blu-ray now, so it's a nice companion piece to that. Now, something I can actually properly talk about 
which is now an Oscar winning film. A winner of six Oscars, you know what I'm talking about. Mad Max Fury Road, the 3D uh, steelbook. Um, and I, I think I heard from James Merchant that, uh, or at least I saw in his video, they didn't release a steelbook of this in the UK, which surprises me. But they had this in the store here in Norway, and it was the January sale, and it was like 70% off. So I think that this was going for around a 300 kroner, which could roughly translate to about 24, 25 pounds in the UK. And that'd be well over 30, 35 dollars, probably 40 bucks even in America, but it went down to about eight pounds for this, which was crazy, so I just thought, I'm picking it up. It wasn't a film I was dying to own, a film I was dying to get on Steelbook, but it's a very nice one. I like the, the finish on it, I like the front cover, I like the back cover, I thought the film was great. I didn't think it was a 10 out 10 masterpiece, like a lot of people have said. I've done an in-depth, well not an in-depth, but I've done a very substantial review of this film on my channel uh, with lots of clips from the film and stuff. So go check that out if you want to hear more, more of my thoughts on the, uh, the film Mad Max Fury Road. Definitely think it was deserving of the Oscars that it won. Uh, and there's some great inside artwork as well, but I'm sure you guys have all seen that by now. But um, yeah, I've yet to check it out on Blu-ray, but you know, I'm sure it's going to look stunning because it's a, a stunningly visual film. So there we go. I'm happy to get the steelbook for that. Now we have uh, two steelbooks that just came out. These are brand new releases. Uh, we have uh, two Studio Ghibli films, two films directed by the great Hayao Miyazaki. We have Kiki's Delivery Service and Princess Mononoke. I already own these films uh, in regular. Uh, I could probably grab them, those, those as well while I'm here because they're right next to me. I have them in the regular uh, Studio Canal uh, slip covered version. So here we have uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, with a nice slip cover, and then Mononoke, gonna, everything's going to fall over. Uh, where is it? Mononoke, there it is. Yeah, so I have both of these films already, as you can see. I love this artwork as well, great cover. Um, so why did I get the Steelbooks? Why did I spend money on the Steelbooks? Well, because I already own the other Steelbooks that have been released in the UK, such as My Neighbor Totoro, and as you see, they match. It's the same continuity that matches those steelbooks. So I have the four that have already been released, which are My Neighbor Totoro, um, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Howl's Moving Castle, and Ponyo. And so to get these two, I now have six films from Hayao Miyazaki in steelbook form. They're just films that are worth double dipping on for me. I love the collection. I know a lot of people don't like these. They think that the, the silver finish should be white and not silver, but I, I just love them. I really do. Uh, and this is one of my favorite films of all time, and this is probably his best film, so they're two fantastic additions to the Steelbook collection. I will open them, I, you know, I'm not going to keep them sealed, I don't do that with any Steelbook I own. Um, so yeah, I will open them at some point, but yeah, you've, you've probably seen videos about these, but yeah, I love the artwork on these, I just, yeah, I just think they look gorgeous. And the films themselves are just fantastic, so to own them, even though it's a double dip, uh, you know, I, I regret nothing. I regret nothing. <laughs> uh, right, put them over here. And I would love to see them release the other films in his uh, filmography in that style, which would be uh, The Wind Rises, Spirited Away, Pocoroso, and Castle in the Sky. I don't think Studio Canal would have the rights to the Kaggle, the, the Kaggle, the Castle of Cagliostro, but at least to have all of his Studio Ghibli films in that steelbook format would be incredible. Uh, I already own all his films, but I probably would be tempted by those if they released them. Right, this one is a childhood favorite of mine. I'm really glad to get it. I actually got it for like five bucks. It was an absolute steal, uh, and especially five Canadian dollars, so it probably would have been like really cheap, like a couple of quid almost. Uh, this is a film I loved growing up. Um, obviously, any kid who grew up in the 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, will have been familiar with Home Alone and how huge Macaulay Culkin was at that time. You know, um, Richie Rich and the Home Alone films and uh, Uncle Buck and My Girl. You know, he's in so many films uh, around that time, the early 90s, late 80s. And I heard that there was a new film that he was in. My mum told me about it and she was like, uh, in fact, I'm probably going to go into this story in another video because I will be talking about this in another video, uh, which you might be able to guess what it might be. So I'll, I'll leave that story for another time. But it is a childhood favourite of mine. It is The Page Master starring Macaulay Culkin, uh, Christopher Lloyd. I think we got Pat Patrick Stewart. He's does one of the voices in this, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Patrick Stewart, uh, Frank Welker, Whoopi Goldberg, Leonard Nimoy. A fantastic cast, um, but an act absolute flop unfortunately. Um, but I love this. Ed Begley Jr. is in this as well. Uh, it's a great film. I absolutely adore it. And to get it on Blu-ray is brilliant. Uh, nothing special about the package, but I do like the disc artwork. It's kind of nice. 
and I love the uh, the French because the Canadian release has the French Canadian. Um, you know, uh, they always do the double kind of um, uh, title on there in English and in French, and it's like uh, Richard of the Secret of the Living Magic or something like that. Like <laughs> I love <laughs> the French translation of the Page Master. Uh, I might actually find out exactly what that translates to when I talk about this in another video. But I'm very happy to own this on Blu-ray. Oh man, such a childhood favorite. I can't wait to watch it again. Uh, now we have a uh, UK release. Uh, this is from Sigler One Entertainment. It's a pretty new release, I think, and it is Compulsion, which I don't really know anything about. Um, but it says on the front, it pretty much sums it up. Uh, you know why we did it? Because we damn well felt like doing it. So uh, it seems very much like a murder plot film. And we have Awesome Wells starring as well, who you can see on the back there. Um, and yeah, it's got some cool special features, a new 4K restoration, uh, an interview with Richard Fleischer. Who, uh, who directed the film, an audio interview. Um, there's a Guardian interview with him from 1944, uh, another filmed interview, there's uh, Orson Welles in the courtroom scene from Compulsion, a reproduction of the original seven inch vinyl, uh, lobby cards, posters and stills gallery, theatrical trailer, you know, Signal One Entertainment, they really seem to put uh, an extra effort into putting special features on these releases, which of course in the age of, you know, Arrow and, and Eureka and Criterion, uh, way before them, in fact, uh, it's, it's definitely a step in the right direction because it seems like, man, studio releases, they are getting skimpier and skimpier, especially when we start seeing the uh, the apparent list of special features on The Force Awakens where there's no trailers, uh, no commentary, so it's, yeah, you know, kind of annoying. Right, uh, ooh, got loads more stuff to go. <laughs> Can I just speed this up? Uh, I'm going to leave this one to last, actually, because I really want this one I'm really excited about, so I'll, I'll leave this, I'll leave this one to last. Now this, I've got to pick up, I think, six Blu-rays here. Yeah, holy shit, right? We have, and this is where the that DVD from earlier will come into play. We have uh, Kinji Fukusaku's Battles Without Honor and Humanity, yes, from Arrow Video. Uh, and this is the Yakuza uh, Papers Volume 1. Uh, and we have some special features. I mean, you've probably seen all of this um, in, in unboxing videos, but you know, as, as usual with Arrow, you get the reversible sleeve on the inside, you know, and uh, I think altogether here we have, I think, 13 discs. So let's just line them all up there. We have, it's all, yeah, five volumes of the Yakuza papers, and then one final bonus as well. So we have Battles Without Honor and Humanity. Uh, Hiroshima Death March, Proxy War, I love the artwork on these by the way, really really cool, uh, Police Tactics, and Final Episode, I love the cover of that one. And then finally we have The Complete Saga, Battles Their Honor and Humanity, The Complete Saga, which is, oh, I'm trying to get the lighting good on that, uh, which is a 224 minute cut, so an almost four hour uh, long cut of, I believe, all f all of the films. It says, editorially combining the storylines of the first four episodes of the Battles That Honor in Humanity series, the complete saga was created for a limited theatrical release in 1980 and subsequently aired on uh, Japan's Toei channel, or Toei channel. A condensed version necessarily uh, eliminating certain plot lines and characters is also a fascinating look at the way the studio repurposed one of its treasures for a new audience while also creating something unique for longtime fans. So very interesting. Uh, I'm definitely uh, intrigued by that one. And, uh, ooh, wow. Wow, the, the alternate cover for that is gorgeous. I love that. Can you see that there? Love that. Wow. Yeah, so I might have to play around with these in terms of which cover, cover to use and so on. But yeah, I haven't seen any of these films. Uh, I'm only familiar with Battles Without Honor and Humanity. Bit of a mouthful. Through, of course, Quentin Tarantino. So yeah, I'm really excited to check all these out. And would probably love to do a marathon of them. How, how long are these? We've got 99 minutes, 100 minutes, 102 minutes, 101 minutes, and uh, 98 minutes. So they're not, they're not short, but they're not long either. So yeah, I might just have a day and just go through all of these, but there is a reason that I've got these, there is a reason that I'm going to be checking these out, and I can't tell you what that is just yet, so, uh, yeah, um, you'll, you'll just, you'll, I'll tell you about it in due course. And the same can be said of these next two as well, and two more Arrow video releases, uh, we have uh, Yasuharu Hasebe's Massacre Gun, and Retaliation, uh, two dual format releases um, from Arrow video. 
which again, I know absolutely fuck all about. So it'll be interesting to dive into these. I'm a huge fan of Japanese cinema, but this kind of uh, action-y Yakuza genre is one that I'm definitely lacking in much knowledge from. So I'll be happy to expand that knowledge in due course and tell you uh, in the future why I am delving into this area of cinema and how I have managed to. Uh, right, we have, of course, what would any... Uh, of my updates be without a stack of Eureka Masters of Cinema. Now let's first, uh, where, where are we? Let's first look at the ones I showed you in the mail day video uh, last month so that we can just blast through those. Of course, as I said, we have Shane, which is now I think out of print, uh, the two disc limited edition. This will be re released in a one disc edition, but the second disc has, um, I think, three different. Um, versions of the film in terms of the aspect ratio, so very cool, um, and um, another one I've heard a lot of good things about, uh, and I'm glad to see that um, you know, Dan Orton is picking some of these up as well and talking about them and getting me more into the idea of watching them myself. Uh, we have some films from F uh, Federico Fellini, we have Roma, I haven't seen any of these, uh, we have The Clowns, and uh, The Swindle. And then we have John Wayne in Red River, which is another one I've heard people talk about uh, in the community. And I'm very much looking forward to checking it out at some point. And of course, I am doing my massive cinema marathon. You can see all of them there behind me. The, the collection is so big now, it's spilled behind me into stacks there on the left. Um, so, yeah, or it'll be on your right, I guess, but on my left. Um, I now have over 100 Masters of Cinema titles, yes. I don't think I've got uh, like 100 actual, well, I guess I do. It's hard to quantify it because uh, one of the, the Blu-rays there, like a single Amore case on that shelf somewhere, uh, includes five you know, spine numbers. Um, but I, I have over 100 spine numbers and I think pretty much around 100 editions. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm really glad to, to have that many in my collection. I'm five away now from the big one all the way through to number 100. So yeah, uh, I'm slowly moving towards that goal. Now we have... Um, Three that I got very recently. This one again, I got nothing really to talk to say about it. It's a John Cassavetes film, Too Late Blues, uh, spine number eighty-five. Uh, so I don't know what this film is about, anything like that. Uh, it's from the sixties, and again, it's just going to be a case of just just delving into these, which I will in my Masters of Cinema marathon. By the way, anyone who is uh, looking forward to the next uh, installment of that, it'll be this week. At the end of this week, there'll be um, episode two while we're talking about Mad Detective. So if you want to go and watch Mad Detective and join in on the debate, then uh, now's the time to do it. Right, now finally we have two that are brand new releases. So I can actually uh, talk a little bit more about them, even though, again, I haven't got much to say about them. Uh, this one I, is the latest one. I just got it in yesterday. It is a limited, limited edition. Limited uh, two-film Blu-ray edition. Pigsty and Hawks and Sparrows from uh, uh, Pasolini. Pierre Paolo Pasolini, who has a lot of films in the collection, um, and this is like limited to one uh, 1,500 titles. So if you're interested in this, get it now. And that's the only reason I bought this, even though it's spine number 136 and 137. Uh, I had a rule to not buy anything over uh, spine number 100 until I'd finished 1 through 100. But uh, when there's limited edition stuff, I want to jump on it before it gets uh, out of print. So this one I had to, to nab. Including, of course, um, uh, wait, what, what, oh, Shane, yeah, of course, because Shane is limited as well. And finally, we have another limited edition, which I believe is close to selling out now. If it haven't, if not, it is already sold out. It is um, Spy Number One Hundred Thirty: A Touch of Zen by King Hu, who I know nothing about, and um, I saw uh, there's a new YouTuber I've, I've checked out recently called A Touch of Film. In fact, I'll leave his link in the description down below. So if you like my updates and the kind of things I talk about, chances are you'll definitely like his updates. So I'll leave a link to his channel down below. And he recently showed this as well. And he said this was a masterpiece. And it's interesting because he was talking about all these films that I loved and saying how great they were. And I was like, yep, yep, yep. And then he said, A Touch of Zen, masterpiece. I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know, if he loves that as well as the other films, then this was probably right up my alley. So I'm really excited to check this one out. Don't know when I will. But it's got a very nice slipcover. Uh, and then you have the film inside. So let's open it up. Let's open it up. We're on the last title now. Um, you know, we've got some nice disc artwork and nice booklet and stuff. So I think they're re-releasing this. 
without the bonus disc. There is a bonus disc with a documentary on this. There are three discs. Um, yeah, we got uh, a 47 minute documentary on the director, a new video essay, a trailer, a select scene commentary by um, Tony Raines. So a lot of good stuff and the booklet itself, of course. Now what I want to really shine a light on here, because again, I haven't seen this film, so I can't really talk much about it. I love the cover, by the way. I really want to talk about how great of a company Eureka Massive Cinema are. Uh, you know, if you buy directly from them, they will ship anywhere in the world for free. Uh, you can't beat that service, you know. Um, and they, this, the postage service that they, they use, however, whatever company they use, they, they do it right. Because if you order from them directly in the UK, you get it the next day, or, or at least, you know, uh, very, very soon after ordering it. And I always get it pretty quick over here in Norway as well. I ordered from them directly uh, because I heard there's going to be a slip cover. It's a nice matte finish to it as well. Not matte, but like it's a nice kind of texture to it. It's not like a normal glossy studio, you know, uh, sticker slapped on it slip cover. It's a nice quality slip cover uh, that really makes it feel classy. And yeah, well, I heard there's going to be a slip cover, and I was like, right, I'm switching my order from Amazon because Amazon just, they're not good with slip covers. They will send it to you, and it will most likely be dinged up. So I bought this. Uh, from Eureka instead, and it turned up and it had a big crease right down the middle, like it had been folded in the middle, and it was just like, oh, it's heartbreaking. I was just like, you gotta be kidding me, you gotta be kidding me. Um, so I, 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 I tried my luck. I emailed Eureka about this. Yep. There we go. Um, Eureka, you know, you can actually see that you can be able to see the crease there. And yeah, is it like monumental? No, but it's like a, it's like a, a folded crease that goes right through the, the center of the front of the thing. So I asked them, you know, do you have any spare slip covers of this hanging around? You know, just just on the off chance. And they said, yeah, we do. And within a few days, I got it. You know, and it was it was it was inside a, a case like this. So I've now got a replacement case. Uh, which I actually need as well. I didn't think about that actually until now. But I need a replacement case for one of my uh, Massive Cinema titles. And they bubble wrapped it as well. And so I was just so blown away by that, you know. I mean, they didn't even ask for proof, which probably I would hope that no one would, would try and abuse that system. In fact, I feel bad now if you're mentioning that. But I mean, you know, well, I guess they probably, you know, no, they saw that, um, obviously, they must have looked at my account and seen that I bought, you know, bought the, the title. Um, and actually, I'm very active on the blu-ray.com thread of the Master of Cinema. I actually posted a picture of it, so they probably saw that as well, because they're very active on that, that site, so they probably saw that I was uh, you know, for real about it. But yeah, um, I couldn't believe they sent it to me, and it was in perfect condition, and I just slipped it on, and it was just like so satisfying. you know. And so yeah, Eureka, absolutely top company. What, what a, uh, just really, really happy with that, I really was. Um, and finally, we have, actually tell you, before I even get on with that, I need a drink because I'm getting out of breath. But yeah, um, let me know if you've seen any of the films, any of the titles that I've shown, and uh, what your thoughts on them are, especially the ones I haven't seen. And uh, yeah, we're going to end with a, a box set, which I am so happy to have gotten. Uh, I've been trying to bite the bullet on this one for a very long time. Uh, this is the, the re-release of it. It's not the original release, which is like a big book set with like loads of pages and stuff with like gorgeous artwork, but... It's just a box standard a box set with a big thick Amory, but it has all the films, and they're films I'm really interested in, and films I'm sure I'm going to really enjoy. And I've been waiting for a good price on this. It's always about forty, fifty bucks, and sometimes it goes down for sale for like thirty dollars. Um, but it was on sale, a one day Amazon deal, in Canada for twenty three dollars. And I think Canadian it converted to about fourteen quid, and I was like, I've got to get it. I have got to get it. The Mel Brooks collection. Um, I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan. Have I seen a lot of his films? No, but I don't need to. Um, for me, Spaceballs. I already own Spaceballs. Is it up there somewhere? Yeah, I already own Spaceballs, uh, the MGM release, which was Region A locked, and you might have seen that in my last 24 hour movie marathon. So I already have the, uh, the 25th anniversary edition. Uh, I'm not sure if the 20th anniversary edition is present on this box set. And by the way, on Amazon, this it doesn't even say that this has Spaceballs in it. It says it's an 8-film collection, not a 9-film collection, which it actually is. But yeah, uh, it was worth putting the money in because this is... Um, you get a lot of films, basically. So let's just uh, take it out and have a look. Uh, the case was cracked, unfortunately, at the bottom there. Which is a bit of a bugger. But uh, none of the discs are loose or anything like that. And it's... Yeah, it's Let's see. 
Is it still closed? No, it doesn't actually close anymore either, which is a shame. Uh, Got to be careful with it, basically. Um, but I'll just show you very carefully. We have a nice booklet inside there with an image from each film and kind of a, a history of it. And then we got all these discs with all the films. Uh, and there are a lot of the films that he made throughout his career, not all of them. I believe one of them is not a film he directed either, but one he starred in. Um, but either way, we got we got nine Mel Brooks films there, whether they're films he's directed or not. I'm trying to close this case now. It's uh, really annoying that it's bust because, again, these are... Uh, I'm sure it wouldn't be cheap to pick up a, a nine disc jumbo Amore replacement case. I might have to at some point though, because it just doesn't close, which is really really bugging me. Anyway, at least it's got this nice, you know, slip box to kind of go in, and it doesn't have to, you know, explode on the shelf. So we have the twelve chairs, which I've actually heard nothing about. We have Blazing Saddles, which I of course have seen. Uh, it's a fantastic comedy. We have Young Frankenstein, which is is just so praised. People love it so much, and I've never seen it. And I'm a big fan of uh, Gene Wilder, so I cannot wait to check that one out. Uh, we have Silent Movie. That's another big reason I wanted this, because it includes Silent Movie, which I believe is kind of a silent film, I'm not too sure. But again, a film that's about silent movies or, you know, uh, lampoons and whatever, I'm all in on that. And this is the only way to own it on Blu-ray is with this set. Uh, we have High Anxiety, which I've seen quite a bit of on TV and I loved it. So I can't wait to see the whole film and in high definition unless. History of the World Part 1, haven't seen that one. To be or not to be, I haven't seen that either. Spaceballs, of course, one of my favorite comedies of all time. And then finally we round off with Robin Hood, Men in Tights. I believe we go through the 70s here, all the way through to the 90s. So a cinematic journey through uh, one of the great kind of uh, comedy masterminds of cinema. And again, I'm sure there's a lot of people who, who, who hate Mel Brooks. I'm sure there's a lot of people who love Mel Brooks. I think I feel like he's a very divisive figure uh, in terms of his comedy. But I absolutely love it, and so I can't wait to check a lot of these out. And uh, that's about it. So there we go. That's the huge Blu-ray update. Uh, not, not as long as I thought it would take, actually. Because, again, quite a few I had shown in a Mail Day video, so I, need, I didn't, didn't need to uh, talk about them in too much depth. So there we go. That is my Blu-ray update. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else I've got to include. I don't think there is. Um, and yeah, I've been kind of talking about these films at a leisurely pace for about 30 minutes. I don't know how people like Blu-ray Dan can, can, <laughs> can, can, I mean, how many have we got? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, uh, yeah, 28 titles talked about over 30 minutes at a leisurely pace. Blu-ray Dan will cover 40 titles <laughs> in like 9 minutes. I don't know how he does it, but he does do it. So there you go. Go check out his channel as well, by the way, and uh, and get him up to 3,000 subscribers. Go check out CP as well, because he's trying to get to 3,000 before Blu-ray Dan does. Let's see who gets there first. Uh, it certainly won't be me. <laughs> I'll, I'll be stuck down at 2,600 for the next, I don't know, year or something. But um, yeah, go check out those guys. I'll leave links to all the people I talked about. Uh, Touch of Film, uh, CP, Well, I Like It Review, Blu-ray Dan. I'll check all the links down below, including the link to my Mail Day video where I talk about some of these. <sighs> and thank you for watching. So you might say he's a really nice guy, really. But if fucking don't catch it with me. <laughs> he says he's really cool. But I think he's a tool. <laughs>